the Steel Eagle 111A. Tonto or Hunter's Point, you choose. Just able to procure a Steel Eagle in Hunter's Point. I sold it one time ago, and what I'm trying to do is uh, rekindle that romance, that relationship. These are outstanding blades from Topps Knives. If you're not a fan of Topps Knives, you absolutely should be. Uh, these are very, very large survival knives. They also have a traction coating on it, 1095 high carbon steel. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. It does have the sawtooth back, which does pretty well at making notches, although it's not a saw. Uh, I will put all the specs down below if you're interested in it. This happens to be my old Tanto Point um, original uh, 111A, and this is brand new out of the box. There's not many differences, uh, although it's a little bit cleaner, but it does have this really nice handle. It is a black and gray linen micarta. These knives are basically identical except for the points, and it, this does have a little bit of a finger choil if you needed it, whereas the Tanto doesn't. Again, my Tanto tip is a little bit older. You're probably thinking to yourself, which one should I buy? This is a very large survival knife. Um, I like the Hunter's Point because it is very traditional, whereas the Tanto Point looks to, seems to be more tactical, although there are Woodscraft people that will argue with you saying that having two points is better than having just one point at the end. And then if you're a traditional, traditionalist more like me, you like the long sweep being belly because you can do a lot more of skinning tasks with it. Although you could do it with this, this is a little bit easier to do, especially if you are more practice with it. Now again, handles are identical. So they are that old school blocky. There's no contour in it other than the contours on the side of the handle. And it does have the jimping on top and in the front. Some people don't like this jimping on top. And I could see where that might cause a hot spot. If you're wearing gloves, it's just no big deal. Uh, so I'm gonna try it today. We're gonna do a little bit of cutting and chopping and test with it and we'll see where it goes. I think that you should have one of these in your survival bug out kit, but uh, we'll do some testing. All right guys, so we are at deer camp and I just wanna let everybody know that I'm taking a break in my uh, hunting right in between. I like to come in for lunch and to test knives and to just take a break from the woods. And then I am going out a little bit later, hopefully I get some, but as you can see from here, that big board that's right up there, that big board is to hang deer. Uh, bear, deer, whatever. Any animal we catch, we throw a rope over it, we hang it up, we air it out, and then we bring it to the taxidermy or we skin it out and process the meat. Uh, the problem with that spot right there is this tree. This tree right here, the branches and everything kind of gets stuck when we throw the rope over it, so I'm gonna take it down. And I figure what better way to test Topps knives than to take a very annoying tree when you're trying to hang your game. So we're gonna try that out right now. Alright guys, the first one we're going to try is the Steel Eagle with the Tonto tip. Again, this is a saber grind with a secondary V-edge. Let's try it. This is the one that I want to take down. No big deal. Coming down. Alright guys, probably going to take a little bit, but... We took a couple whacks at it with the Tanto tip, so now we're gonna try the Hunter's tip. with the uh, tanto.
All right, let's do a little bit of delimbing. So I like to do the one swipe test just to see where we are as far as how much weight and force I can put behind this sucker and chop it off and try to get my feet out of the way so I don't chop them off. So I think about here, this is about two, two fingers thick, okay? All right, not bad. All right, that could be me because I was tired, but it went pretty deep. Small ones are not a problem. Let's try it on this one. Again, more delimbing. I think what it is is a really green tree. Tonto tip. Get this crap out of the way. This is a good one right here. It's a good test. All right, not bad. Swing and a half. It did most of the cutting, it's just that the tree bark is holding it up, so I'm okay with that. Alright, that was nice and clean. Again, these, these saber grinds are mostly used for splitting, so when we do splitting, you're going to see that. If it was a higher grind and a thinner edge, so yeah, anything of this size, anything of this size is going to cut really, really nice. You can see that right there. Do a little bit of flat chopping just to see where I'm at with this. All right, pretty good. It does have that nice weight behind it. All right, once it gets thicker, it's going to be a little harder. Okay. So I can't really hold too much against it, but. Push cuts shouldn't be a problem. All right, push cuts, not a problem. All right, the only issue you have is that your thumb on the back of this saw is gonna be a little serrated, so you might wanna move up top here a little bit. Again, it's a very large knife. All right, so if that works for you. You can do it that way as well. It's a little bit uncomfortable because it has this finger choil right here, but you can scooch down a little bit. Right? Or you know, some people are gonna Let's try it with the hunters. Absolutely no problem. Same thing, so as I figured. Seasoned wood shouldn't be a problem. We'll start with the tanto. Got a little bit of a tonic. Probably should be no problem at all. I don't think it would be. No problem. 
Right, let's test out the, the serrations in the back. The real serrations in the back were ideally made for traffic. I'm not gonna say it's a real saw, because it's not, uh, but it does work. It's very sharp out of the box. If you were gonna make a figure four, if you were gonna make a figure four trap, I think I would wanna use this. Although, I'm trying to get a handle on it. There you go. You definitely do some notching. Try with the Tonto. Obviously this wood is not straight, so it makes things a little bit more difficult, but you can do it. Oh, it definitely works. All right guys, so let's talk about the sheets. I have an older sheath and I have a new sheath. All right, the new sheath, I'm sorry, the old sheath, the reason you can tell that this is an old sheath is because it has one pocket, all right? The new sheets have two, all right? They're both that same nylon, ballistic nylon, blah, blah, blah. I hate it, I like Kydex, but that's completely, that's me, all right? Um, it's functional, it will work, it will last, all right? I just don't like the kind of uh, nylon ballistic that's there. It does come with a Topps whistle. It will come with the blue card. So if you don't have one, you absolutely will get one with every single new Topps. It will come in that uh, plastic, uh, plastic uh, heat treated bag. It's just put in a bag and then sent out to you. I don't have a problem with that. There are no buttons, there's just Velcro. All right, this is an older knife. It happens to be one of Topps almost original um, survival knives when they first started. It was a little bit smaller, but this is the larger version, this is the 11A. Uh, I would de definitely look at the uh, 107s, the 105s. Really, really nice uh, survival knives. These happens to be a little bit bigger for bigger tasks, obviously. Uh, with the older sheath, you only get one pocket. Both knives will fit in the older sheath. And they are bi-directional. So this is the Tonto. This is the Hunter's Point. Both fit bi-directional. So you can wear it on your left, your right, your pack, don't matter. On the new sheets, however, it's only gonna fit one way. See how it sticks out? All right, so there probably is an issue with the molding only works one way and this is a tighter fitting sheet it doesn't rattle as much as the old sheet so that kind of makes sense just to give you an idea to show you also with the tanto it will fit one way and you gotta flip it around and it does not fit all right so i think what you can do is you can take the plastic insert that's in here this plastic insert take that out and you will be able to um, switch it around from left to right if that's what you want to do. All right guys, so let's talk a little bit about the ergonomics while I was swinging this. So this finger choil is really comfortable to use in a Crusader's grip, meaning that you're just gonna grab this right here and it's really comfortable. However, swinging it, I found that this little piece back here, this has two huge lanyard holes, or three actually, one, two, and three. If you wanted to wear, use a lanyard, I would recommend that. If you're gonna be swinging this thing like an ax, uh, I would use a lanyard hole. But this piece right here does dig into the bottom of your finger a little bit. Uh, don't worry about the cut, I did that myself. And as you're swinging it, again, I have extra large hands. You could also use gloves, ideally. Gloves would probably be a better idea. But if you can see where my finger, my pinky finger is, right here, it hits right on that metal. Also. This nub right here is not conducive to swinging because my forefinger wind up sl slipping off. It didn't matter which knife it was, same thing, same handle. So again, this piece right here and the finger choil. Fits really good in the hand uh, using it, you know, using it to saw or to cut or to push cut. But when you're using it as a chopping tool, your finger, your hands tend to slide back to the back of uh, up the handle 
which with gloves would probably be outstanding, but without gloves it's not. And the only reason I mention that is because if you're going to use this as a machete or as a chopping tool, what you need to do is make sure that you have the proper safety equipment, such as gloves. And you might not always have that in the survival situation, so just be aware of that. Uh, I had a little bit of hot spot on the, on the back, but it wasn't terrible. Mostly it was this pinky right here that was rubbing against this back end, all right? So again, I have extra large hands. That could be an issue. That's probably why it does that, um, but uh, to each his own. All right, guys, so I'm gonna give it a highly recommend. I think these are outstanding blades. If you are someone that needs a survival knife, some chopping, some splitting, there's a little bit of saw back. Uh, it is a very large knife, uh, stout, quarter of an inch thick. You decide if that weight is for you. The only minor difference was the Tanto point and the Hunter's point. Either one will work. I don't think there's any major difference in this knife. So if you have one or the other, it just comes down to personal preference. Uh, really well-built uh, survival knives and chopping knives. Uh, again, like I said, the only thing I would uh, do is probably use gloves if you're going to use this as a hatchet or a replacement hatchet or chopping down large trees. Uh, you will need a set of gloves for that. That's the only thing I would complain about. But other than that, I know Tops has a really good guarantee and definitely well worth the price. All right, guys, I'm gonna put links down below if you're interested in any of these blades. Please like, subscribe, share. Thank you very much, guys, and as always, please be safe.